Hello and welcome to another top five here at MacGuffinPodcast.com. I'm Brandy. And I'm Ed. That was in case you missed Alan. <laughs> and today we are going to be talking our top five films directed by Clint Eastwood. Um, he has J. Edgar coming out this week. Yep, it's coming up. And we, we, whenever, whenever you think of Clint, you think, you know, oh, the movie star, but... Dude's a prolific director. He's, you know, made mm -hmm. uh, IMDb. He's got him listed at 35 movies. That's a hell of a lot. Yeah. When I agreed to do this, I didn't really know how many movies he had directed. Yeah. <laughs> I've watched a fair few of Clint movies in the last few weeks. So. Sweet. Yeah. All right. You want to start? Sure. Um, my number five is Bird. Came out in, I believe, 1988. Uh, stars uh, Forrest Whitaker in a great performance as Charlie Parker, the uh, jazz musician. It it's, uh, comes out of Clint's long-held passion for jazz music. Mm -hmm. It's a terrific movie. Um, <clears throat> Samuel E. Wright is particularly good in it as Dizzy Gillespie. He's one of the few non-crab roles I've ever seen him in. Samuel, Samuel Wright was the voice of Sebastian <laughs> in The Little Mermaid. Uh, it's a really terrific movie. And yeah, you seen that one? One of the ones I didn't see. Oh, okay. No, it's totally. <laughs> it is totally. I should have totally asked good. you, like, what should I do oh, no, no, for this? I no problem. A bunch it, of crap. It, it was one of those ones. <laughs> it was. It was criminally uh, overlooked at the like. Forrest Whitaker got. I don't know if he won the Golden Globe. He got nominated that year, but he but nothing. No nominations for Oscars. Mm. And it's one of those also great like all black casts, which is you know it's always nice to see in movies. Yeah. When you know some minorities get some screen time. So, it's a really good movie. Highly recommend it. Okay, uh, it's on my list. Okay, my number five is a movie that I think is very flawed, but really interesting. And I think some people might have passed it by because I'm not so sure that the advertising campaign was uh, correct in the kind of movie that it is. And that is Changeling um, from a couple years ago starring um, Angelina Jolie. I remember seeing ads for this and it seemed like there was some kind of like supernatural crazy thing going on like that's not my son blah 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 um that is not what this movie is about at all um <laughs> it is about missing kid a missing kid and a mom and no one believes her and the deepest theme is that people didn't trust women's word on their own back in back in the day and you why know, should still they? sometimes you know it's, <laughs> it's about being branded a hysterical female and how no matter what you do once that has happened you are just digging your hole deeper and deeper and deeper and um this movie could have ended about half an hour earlier <laughs> um which you can say about a lot of Clint movies wasn't she nominated for an oscar for that i'm trying to remember i know it's got a uh, guy from burn I think in it too. she was um, jeffrey donovan thank you yes, yes and he is such an asshole um, but I really enjoyed it, and I wasn't necessarily expecting to, based on what I thought it was going in, and I think it's it's really worth a watch, and Angelina Jolie is great in it. And it's written by J. Michael Straczynski of Babylon 5 and comic book fame. Yes, that is surprising when you look at his... It sticks <laughs> out on his resume. Yeah. Um, on to my number four, which is my pick for Clint's probably most criminally overlooked movie, <laughs> and it's White Hunter Black Heart it's from 1990. No, totally... A lot of people haven't seen this. I saw it in the theater, and it is really good. It's um, based on a book, and which is kind of a loose adaptation of the filming of the African Queen. Hmm. Clint Eastwood plays John Huston. He doesn't. Yeah. He's not called John Huston in it. He doesn't sound like like his voice doesn't sound <laughs> like him. But he's chomping a cigar the whole time and making some really great pronouncements. Um, and it, what it's about is actually. One of the reasons John Huston filmed The African Queen was he wanted an excuse to go big game hunting. So he was like, well, well, we'll finance a movie so I can go out there and shoot elephants. <laughs> and that's, the Yikes. movie's actually about his relationship to wild animals and kind of the encroachment of man into the wild, like what we're doing. Um, it's a, and it's about like you know how dark things get. It's also got Jeff Fahey in it. So that Lost title's Fame. pretty literal then. Yeah, White, White Hunter, Hunter Black Blackheart. Heart. <laughs> but it's really really good. I I, I okay. I lost I'm him. now interested. I I'm really now like it. Interested. Okay. Uh, my number four is another recent one. I don't. I mean, I don't have anything deep to say about this film. I just really enjoyed watching it, and that is Gran Torino. Um, I love Clint as an actor. I have, I love him as an actor, and I have a lot of issues with him as a director. 
But so it was really fun to watch, you know, old curmudgeonly Clint for me. And, I, and you know, it's, it's pretty mind. heavy. It's a pretty heavy handed movie. And usually I roll my eyes at that kind of stuff. But this one just kind of worked for me. I thought it was and it's, really entertaining. They build it as his last on screen performance. Oh. But I just heard a rumor yeah. that he's going to be in something else next yep, year. Yeah, he so, just won't retire. He's like Jay Z. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the share of farewell tour that came yeah. through town four times. Really. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I don't know. I mean, I I just enjoy this film, and I think I think a lot of people felt that way about it. Like it was just kind of like a solid. Yeah. No. And and Clint Clint's always engaging on screen. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Good one. Uh, my number three is probably a fairly predictable one. Uh, Million Dollar Baby, Best Picture winner. Ooh, I hear the air sucking out of the room. I don't like this movie. <laughs> uh, okay, let's get into it. Let's get into oh, it. Oh, I think it's Boxing very man. emotionally manipulative and ultimately quite cheap, actually. Why? Um, because I just, I don't... No, uh, I think it's really hard to pull off that sort of like, oh, I've... I am so lonely and now you are my surrogate like for the person I'm lonely for and we're developing this decidedly non-sexual relationship between a mentor and I just th I don't think they pull it off because I think it's just it tries it hits it too hard like you could have gone completely without the whole subplot with his like uh, talking to the priest and everything else like you could have yeah. like like I just I would have because he's it just got to work for me. He's got to wrestle with the the issue of faith and doing what he ultimately does. If you haven't seen it, I don't. I don't. It's hard to give ruin. a crap about what he ultimately oh, does. Think, like when it's. I think this is one of his about, best performances. I, yeah, I think he is terrific in it, and. Uh, I think she is the character that we should have been talking about her journey and making the movie about him is a cop out. I I think it's about <laughs> both of them, and and her family is. H horrid. Yes, and that's... Uh, uh, I don't I, know. It's, I just, love... it's just too many things. It's too many horrible things all lined up in a row, and then it ends in a horrible thing. It's like, this could have been a Lifetime TV movie, and I know that that's kind of like a cheap shot to take at something that isn't melodramatic, but... Uh, we could do a whole separate thing about this, then. This could go on for a while, but I... I think this is a divisive movie for a disagree. few people on the, on the podcast, so... Uh, what a, moving okay, on. Thumbs up for me. We're getting the move on segment. All right. <laughs> from someone who agrees with me, by the way. Um, so my number three, um, is Clint's very first full-length movie, Play, Play Misty, Misty for, for me. me, which uh, Jessica Walter is just terribly frightening in this <laughs> film. She's awesome. I always feel like, as like my feminist perspective or whatever, that I should hate movies that are like about like a psycho obsessive the fatal stalker. Attraction. Yeah, but they're sort of like guilty pleasure type things for me, and I think this is like one of the best of that subgenre of the stalker films um because of the acting i mean i'm a huge jessica walter fan and uh i don't i don't know it has like these fun 70s like tangents it's, where like they're in a you know he's in a waterfall with his girlfriend they're going to the monterey jazz festival or whatever like yeah. it's so 70s it is, yes um but in a very enjoyable way for me yeah <laughs> yeah it, i I'm, i mean yeah in it, i i, I I think Clint has grown as a director quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So it's it's I, I think he's actually one of the most interesting guys to watch. Like, you know, the guy who directed The Rookie uh, has gone on to make some you know great movies. Mm -hmm. you know? And uh, Play Misty for me was the starting point, so to speak. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, on to my number two uh, is probably on a lot of people's list: The Outlaw Josie Wales. It's, it's um, a good movie. Uh, I, there, I, he's directed a few westerns that could easily make my top five list, you know, High Plains Drifter or, uh, you know, uh, Pale Rider. I have a lot of issues with High Plains Drifter. Oh, uh, Town Called another, Held. Anyway. Another conversation. That's, that's a different movie. Uh, I'll Josie Wells. One of the great things about it is uh, Chief Dan George, the mm -hmm. uh, who I, I know he was nominated. I think he won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor that year. I don't know. Can't remember. But this was one of the movies, along with, like, Little Big Man, to take Native Americans seriously in a Western. Yeah. Um, we, you know, long before Dances with Wolves did it, we had these movies that were, weren't just treating him as, you know, the guys with the, the feathers sticking out going, woo, 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 you know, actual characters that 
you know, mm-hmm. had a clue and were Yeah, and he, I mean, he gets, like, the best lines in the movie right. and he gets to, like, say his piece about his character. We don't just assume who he is. Um, it's a really interesting movie because I thought it was going to be kind of, like, a straight shoot up kind of Western when I watched it and it just, it's very meandering. Like, yeah. it's, like, this long, weird adventure and it's it's worth watching. I for also sure. like the fact that Western, uh, Western set in the post-Civil War era because yes. there are less of those. It's yes. just... It's a neat one. Yeah. Okay. My number two, all right, whatever. I'm a woman. I like a romance. I have a lot of issues with the Bridges of Madison County, but if this was a movie that was only the Meryl and Clint storyline... This is the one I haven't seen. Okay. Being a guy, I guess. I don't know, but I I really want to see it. Okay, it's my number two. And if it was without the framing story with Meryl's kids that find her diary oh god it's so pointless the story of what happens between robert kincaid who comes to town and sweeps uh, meryl streep's character francesca off her off her feet and they fall in love in just four days if it was just that it would be like one of my favorite movies of all time even though francesca you're so fucking stupid <laughs> <laughs> I'm like don't even like, ah but it makes the ending of the movie makes me crazy in a good way you know, like where I just want to throttle the character. There are a but lot it's of romances, the story like Wuthering Heights kind of stuff. You know, me yeah, crazy it's totally way. like it's a great romance where you just want to punch them in the face for <laughs> every way that they act on each other. But it has this awful framing device that is just like every time they flash back to the present where her kids are reading her diary, you just are like, oh, fast forward. <laughs> I, I, I do remember, watching the two of them act together is stunning. And, and I do remember when that movie came out and she was nominated for the Oscar. Mm-hmm. And I remember, I think it was Roger Ebert said, you know, Meryl Streep, we, we take her for granted a lot of times because, oh, of course she's great. But mm-hmm. sometimes you have to remind yourself, oh, yeah, she is really it, great. Watching the two of them act together is a, a pleasure. Yes. Uh, so on to my number one, which is probably the most obvious thing on this whole list. Unforgiven. Yeah, it's my number one, too. Okay, let's, yeah, I mean... Come on. <laughs> I think, I've, like, like going over the whole list of all the movies that Clint Eastwood has made, a lot of them are super flawed, even for the very interesting things. Unforgiven is just solid. Like, yeah. it's just good. Wait, I, I love so much that he's, he's taken his well-worn <laughs> persona of the Western icon and completely, completely flips it. Mm-hmm. The violence isn't glamorous. That you know, a guy gets shot on the john. Another guy <laughs> gets shot and is crying and crawling. I yep. mean, it's it, the gun battles are not fun and sh- boom, boom, boom. You even have the hero at the end instead of going riding off into the sunset, he's riding off into a dark, stormy night. Mm-hmm. I mean, everything about it is is the antithesis of the of the hero. Yeah, and it's I I can't say enough about that movie. Yeah, it, it it is. It's just and and all the other actors in it are great yes. too. You know, your you, Gene Hackman action. Your um, Richard Harris is in my remembering no. names. Oh uh, yeah, Richard Harris and um, Gene Hackman. And yeah, and <laughs> Morgan Freeman. Uh huh. Um, Francis Fisher. Yeah, yeah, yes. Francis Fisher. God, I can't remember yeah. to say, but she's great too. Um, and the the setup for the story is so much different than a lot of other. They even cut um, her teats. Yeah, a lot of other like we need some revenge movies. You know, I love that it's like the the prostitutes who want their revenge on what a horrible thing that's been done to one of them, and instead of just like random, there's bandits a coming kind of right. a thing. Like it's a very personal revenge story, and and, and even yeah. the English Bob storyline is poking it like puncturing the mythos of of the west it's yeah a uh, lovely 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 really movie. good movie yep okay well at least we <laughs> we end on a on a happy note yes we end on a happy note um let us know what you think of clint eastwood his directing career if you're looking forward to jay edgar if we missed some gems there or if um, uh letters from iwo jima there are some t- yeah letters from iwo jima is pretty good um, or if there's some ones that are like really interesting and terrible, like blood work. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, let us know Honky what you think man. at MacGuffinPodcast.com and thank you for watching. <laughs>